listening friends of Burnt River Ranch. Sorry for my hiatus in making videos again. It's been super chaotic here. Um, yeah, not going to lie, it's been pretty stressful around here. messages from people saying that they really appreciate my transparency in this whole farming journey because it is definitely not all sunshine and rainbows. There is a lot of heartache, stress, worry, sleepless nights, and we do all that hard work and put all that effort in to get that little fleeting moment in time of joy and happiness and positivity where things seem to go according to plan and go right. But it takes a lot of failing to get there and mistakes happen so yeah definitely is not all a linear line of growth here that is for sure it's a lot of ups and downs so first of all I made a video a while ago a couple weeks ago well, I might have just posted it, but anyways, a couple weeks ago, our cow, Penelope, our Jersey milk cow that we have for our family, she calved. That went good. No complications with calving. Thank goodness for that. So that all went smoothly. However, I know better than to just, you know, leave it at that because now she has mastitis again. We treated her for mastitis last fall and... It was good. Um, she went into the dry period, completely mastitis free, milk was clear, all that good stuff. We did CMTs on her and made sure that she was clear on that. Anyways, she got mastitis again. Um, it's not terrible at this point. She's got two quarters this time instead of one that is affected, but they don't seem to be too terrible for milk quality and she doesn't seem to be too terribly uncomfortable but you can tell that her udder in those two quarters is a lot harder than it should be and at first I thought maybe it was just edema from calving but it doesn't seem to be going away I've been trying a lot of different holistic type of methods to try to get it to recover on its own because I did not want to have to give her antibiotics again because when you give her antibiotics of course obviously there's milk withdrawal and we can't consume the milk or make cheeses or make butter or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm putting all the effort into milk a cow and getting none of the rewards. So unfortunately I tried a whole bunch of different holistic methods. I'm not gonna name them all because it's gonna take up half my video. Anyways, none of them are working. So I ended up going to the vet and unfortunately having to get some medication. So she's on Spectramast, which is an intramammary antibiotic infusion that you put up their teat. Luckily, she's pretty good about that. Um, just put the kick bar on her just to be safe. And for the most part, she's pretty good about that. I've been putting in her Spectrum mask during the evening milking after I'm done. And I lost a lot of sleep over this, but I consulted with a lot of different people about calf sharing and not calf sharing, about taking the calf off of her and just bottle feeding her instead of calf sharing. And honestly, I took the calf off of her with intentions to treat the cow and make the calf a bottle baby. I thought, well, maybe that'll make her a more tame cow in the future because we do plan to make her into a milk cow eventually. However, I just, I couldn't do it. Honestly, I could not do it. And some of you dairy farmers are going to think ill of me for saying that. You're going to say that I'm weak because I took the calf off of her and I didn't keep it off of her. 
and I know a lot of dairies do that. They take the calf off and they make it a bottle baby, but to be honest with you, I find it's making my cow more stressed out. It's making me a heck of a lot more stressed out having to think about bottle feeding this baby for the next six months. And I just have way too much going on here to feasibly do that. Calf sharing is working well for us. So I'm gonna continue doing that. And the calf sucking the milk out more times a day has gotta be good for the mastitis. And I know people are gonna say, well, the calf's gonna spread the mastitis to the other quarters and that may be so, but we will deal with that problem if it arises. For now we are calf sharing and it's just working out way better for all of us. She's still getting that time in <clears throat> every time I milk where I halter her, tie her up, practice leading, touching her all over, getting her used to human contact, making her friendly and tame and all that. So it is what it is at this point. I have lost so much sleep and done so many hours of research on what I should or should not do. And I have come to my decision. It is what it is. She also had, I think, mild ketosis after she calved. She was super sluggish. She wasn't interested in her grain, just not like her. So I treated that with some natural methods and she seemed to come around. So thankfully we are over that hump and she seems back to herself. Next thing on my plate has been that my incubator pooped the bed, which was my fault. Um, and I'm not very impressed about it because I have I had bought some turkey eggs in there. I'd had poor hatch rates in the past and I was really hopeful that we were gonna have better success this time around. And the eggs were looking so good. I had a dozen in there and 11 of them were viable when I candled them before lockdown. So I was really hopeful that we were gonna have a good um, hatch rate there. Also had it filled with chicken eggs and some black copper Moran's eggs that I had bought. <sighs> yeah, unfortunately with all that I had going on, my mind slipped a little bit, I guess. And when I put them into lockdown, <clears throat> I accidentally forgot to put my humidifier sensor back in. And my incubator has an automatic humidity kit. So it has a sensor and it automatically puts like water vapor into the incubator to adjust the humidity levels. So because the sensor wasn't in it, it was saying that the humidity was low, which it wasn't. So it just kept pouring more and more and more water vapor into the incubator, essentially flooding the eggs, frying the circulatory fan in it and messing with the thermostat. I gave it some time to cool off after I noticed it and, or after my husband noticed it actually. And anyways, yeah, the fan is hooped and it's no good, but the temperature is still working. So the whatever is in there that makes it warm is working. So I put it to still air mode, which I didn't even know you could do. So I learned something new there. I have a Hubba Bader 2370 or 2730. I don't remember what sequence the numbers are in, but that's what I have for an incubator. So that's still working. And they were supposed to hatch on Friday. It is now Sunday. And we did have two turkeys hatch and one chick. And we have a few more pipped. So maybe they'll make it and maybe they'll just be late. But I'm expecting our hatch rate to be pretty low because of my screw up. Um, yeah, so my incubator is needing to be either replaced or I'm gonna have to buy parts for it, which with parts and shipping almost costs the same amount as buying a whole new incubator. So that was that, very frustrating. Next thing, now my dog, Nora, the one that had puppies, has mastitis as well. So I noticed that yesterday that she was acting really depressed and weird and wasn't really hanging out with her puppies at all. She just was kind of laying around and not eating. So I went and checked on her and sure enough, one of her teats is hard and swollen and there was like pus coming out of it when I squeezed it. Yeah, so we treated her with antibiotics and she's doing a lot better now. So we'll keep an eye on her and make sure that she's doing good. But last but not least, guess what happened today? Just to add two things. We are in the process of weaning our piglets off the moms. So I had weaned a batch of piglets a couple days ago off of two of our sows. The ones that are now getting to their dry period, I guess, these two sows that I weaned their babies, I put them in together. All was good, no fighting happened. So that was really good because I was worried about that. Um, and then we had another sow from a different group that is pregnant. 
and she is getting bullied and not being really allowed to get much feed at the food trough from the other sows that are in her pen. So I thought, usually this sow's at the bottom of the totem pole, and I could put her in the pen with these other two sows that just weaned their piglets. So I did that this morning. Um, again, I guess it slipped my mind how muddy it is right now. We've had a ton of rain, which I'm thankful for, because it will help reduce our wildfire risk and help all the crops and grass and stuff grow. But unfortunately, um, and nothing major happened, so I put these pigs all together at feeding time. Everybody was eating, all was going well. Um, the one sow that I just put into the group this morning, she went up to the feed trough. I think Cece is her name, is the one that got injured. She got nervous of her and she just kind of whipped herself back and she stepped in some mud and I don't know what happened. She twisted her leg wrong. We had this happen with another sow a couple years ago and I'm pretty certain she broke her back leg. And Beatrice, the other sow that the two were in a tussle or whatever, like I said, it was nothing major. There was no like crazy fight happening. It was just a little, what? And she stepped wrong and broke her leg. But anyways, Beatrice, she cut up her ear a little bit. It's bleeding more than, it just looks worse than it is. So she'll be fine. Yeah, but Cece, she broke her leg. She is our... Berkshire Hereford sow and I don't know if she broke her front leg as well or if she just sprained it or what but <clears throat> I was able to get her up and walking <clears throat> excuse me and separate her into a different pen because the other sows of course there's one hurt they're taking advantage of hurting her jumping all over her and just just being rude so anyways we got her separated into a different pen I gave her a good shot of uh, Medicam which is a painkiller and yeah she's not really doing a whole lot of moving around but her spirits are good she seems interested in food and i had a sow break her leg a couple years ago that we had to euthanize so i'm hoping that doesn't happen because she's a really nice sow it's always the good ones but we also had a different sow break her leg two years ago and with some rest and time alone in a separate pen she did heal up completely fine and she was good so the unfortunate thing is it's really wet outside and chilly at night still. So I don't want her to get sick. So yeah, I'm gonna attempt to get her in the barn so at least she's in a dry, warm area. Well, into the shelter, I should say, not the farrowing barn. I'm not gonna make her walk across the whole yard. I'm just trying to get her in the shelter so that she stays warm and dry and hopefully she'll come around in a few weeks time, but. Yeah, it's really shitty that had to happen. Other than that, we rehomed some of the piglets today. Some of them went to their new homes, and yeah, that's what's been happening on the farm. So it's been uh, fairly stressful. Well, I managed to get her in the barn at least. So hopefully now she won't get sick. So her little calf here, her little heifer, every time I milk, she gets tied up. So she gets practice being tied up and she gets led around. So she's getting halter trained. And it also helps keep mama nice and calm when we're milking to have her baby up here, not running around like a crazy little calf like she does if she's not tied up. And she gets stressed out. Penelope starts pooping and peeing and moving all over the place and mooing. And it's just not a fun time for anybody. So it's a win-win. She learns how to be halter trained and it keeps mama calm and it helps my milking experience. And we do plan to keep her so far. She's a speckle park cross with a Jersey. So a little bit of a hardier milk cow with the beef in her. And yeah, our plan is to keep her and train her as a milk cow. We'll see how that goes. All right, I'm gonna go turn Penelope out into her electric fence pen that I just made so she can graze all day and have a drink of water. And her and her baby can relax. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on was where we live in northern Alberta, Canada. I find just Canada in general is super, super lacking on our access and selection to different products that a lot of people have in the States. So one thing that people always talk about on the dairy cow pages is as a preventative for milk fever, they give their family milk cow a uh, 
big tube of this thing called CMPK gel, which is basically calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and potassium. And it's a preventative for milk fever. There is nowhere around me that carries that. I can order it. It's $37 plus tax, a tube, from the cheapest place I could find. Of course, then I have to wait for it to come in, so it's not readily available. Also, uh, I looked online at a few stores in the States, and it's a whopping, like, $9 or something for a tube in the States, which is just ridiculous to me how much we have prices marked up in Canada, and that's not the only thing. There's lots of different things that you see in the States being a cheap, affordable option, but in Canada, it's just, like, whammo. So, yeah, our lack of selection for dairy products in Canada and especially in the peace country and a lack of knowledgeable people to talk to unless you are another farmer that does this is also difficult. There we go now mama and baby are outside enjoying the nice fresh grass in their new pen. Having forage in her diet is extremely important and it's said to help her symptoms quite a bit to have fresh grass. Our hay situation this last year has been kind of grim. We didn't have the best quality hay, and so I think Penelope's kind of suffered because of it, unfortunately, but there's just really no options, so beggars can't be choosers, right? But unfortunately, I think it's caused her some issues. amazing the amount of things that a mom can get done during nap time but I think my little guy's probably awake by now so I'm gonna end this video and I will see you guys on the next one thanks again for watching